Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark and this is Richard and we are rebuilding an unfinished Sea line SC35 boat. If you're new to our channel, please check out our other videos as this will help you understand progress on the project so far. In the last video, we made templates for the new bonded windows, fed and sanded the radar arch and filled the holes on the roof gutters where a previous owner had made several attempts at fitting the sliding roof mechanism. In this video, we'll continue working on the cockpit moulding on this cold winter's morning. Uh, it's minus one outside, so please just excuse the noise of the diesel heater we've got running, just trying to heat this area up a little bit. Got all of this radar arch sanded yesterday, so that's looking really good. All down the sides, B pillars on both sides, and we've got the track gutters done as well, uh, which take the track for the sliding canopy. So that all looks really good now. So this will need fairing. Um, it is, say, really cold outside. We need it to be at least 10 degrees in here, really, before we can do any more fairing. It's an epoxy-based fairing, um, and they recommend at least 10 degrees on the uh, total fair product. So we're just going to see if we can get the temperature up in here a little bit more. Um, and while we're waiting for that to happen, we're going to just concentrate on these A pillars at the bottom here now and just get these all tidied up. You see, it's quite a mess here with the adhesive. Um, on the inside and on the outside. So, let's get into it. Okay, so that's all cleaned up nicely. So that looks a lot better all the way around the back here. And then on the front side, we've just rubbed down the front of the A-pillar. We've got some sort of um, cracked gel coat here. And uh, so I've just rubbed all that off and we've just, all we've got under there is a, is a joint. So this is a, a join that runs down here where the top and bottom part of this molding were joined together at the factory. And uh, that all looks pretty good. And then you can see there's some filler here or jointing compound at the back here. But what we have got is a bit of a problem just here. They're just basically they just push through. So there's either some thin fiberglass here or a bit of a defect from the factory. Um, or there's some rot in there. Uh, we don't know what's actually in there, whether there's some timber or what's in there quite yet. So what we need to do is we'll drill that out, clean it all out. Hopefully it's all good in there and then we'll be able to put some thickened epoxy in there, fair it over, and that will be a nice repair. So the hole ended up being a little bit bigger than we originally thought. So we've uh, come in actually with a hole saw and got rid of all of this rot. And inside is some probably 10 millimeter thick ply, which was presumably put in the base of this A pillar because they used two th big coach bolts from underneath in the factory to actually hold this A pillar down and they bonded it as well. Um, so that is the reason we assume for the ply. Uh, we've dug out all the rotten ply and we're back now to pretty good ply, seems pretty dry and um, we've left this open actually for a few days and um, so that should dry out nicely. I think this hole is probably going to be a little bit too big now for thickened epoxy so we'll probably have to lay some glass in there but that's not a problem. So next job is to have a look at the other A pillar and uh, see what condition that's in.
so this is a bit strange we've got a bit more rot on this side as well so just under the gel coat here um, this sort of gel coat was peeling so what we've done is ground all that out there um, and there was some um, timber in there presumably ply again probably on the base of this B pillar and then we've got timber just underneath the gel coat here which is really strange I mean the the timber is dry actually which is I guess a good sign but you've basically got gel coat sat on the timber which was why that was cracking and it is never going to work so I think what we're going to have to do is grind this out as well and uh, it's just underneath this sort of gel coat stroke very thin layer of fairing that's on this joint here so I think what we'll do is we'll have to grind all this joint out as far as we need to to get rid of the timber it mainly seems to be at the front here but I think we will have to work back and just see how far that goes get it all out and then we'll be able to use some thickened epoxy to to fill that gap and then fair it and that should be a good repair but literally this timber is literally just under the surface of this sort of gel coat fairing finish so not ideal so I think we need to grind that out probably at least this sort of thickness so what's this six to eight millimeters get it right back make sure it's fully dry and then we could epoxy thickened epoxy and fair that and that will be a nice repair but a little bit surprising to be honest but uh, that's uh, all part of the adventure with this boat it seems okay so that's all ground out now and then we've just had the heater running for about an hour just to make sure that this timber is 100% dry it's a nice pale color so that's uh, a good sign what we're going to do is just put the moisture meter on it just make sure it is 100% dry and then we'll be able to put some thickened epoxy across this uh, leave that set up and then we'll be able to put some fairing compound on it So unfortunately, a bit of a problem, we've put the moisture meter on here and this has given us quite a high reading, it's well over 30. So what we've done is we've set up the diesel heater with this pipe here and we've got that running inside our hole in the A pillar and what we're going to do now is heat this up and leave that on for the rest of the day and, and possibly several more days, as however long it takes to get this dry. So we'll keep monitoring that with the moisture meter and we won't be covering this up until this timber is completely dry so we don't want to seal that moisture in so what we're going to do is switch over to the other side and I think we're going to grind out the bottom of that A pillar as well and just check whether or not we've got any moisture in that side Thank you. 
So this side is now ground out and we've exposed the timber again and we need to leave that to dry as well so we've just actually switched the heater over to this side for a bit so we can dry this side as well and then we've also ground out this and feathered this so that we can put some fiberglass lay up on there and also we've got our windscreen wiper hole which was actually in the wrong position it needs to be further back so we'd already laid up underneath and then we've just dished that out with the little uh, sanding disc on the drill and uh, got that dished out nicely so we can lay a little bit of fiberglass in there and then gel coats over the top and I've also just flattered this with some 1000 grit uh, wet and dry just to get rid of there was actually some discoloration here it's sort of quite yellow and oxidized so just got rid of all of that and that is now looking good and while I've been doing that Richard has been just going along and dishing out all of these little holes that we've got here um, along this side and the other side so he's going to tape those up or tape around them and drop some epoxy resin in there these are at, holes are actually um, on the inside so the window will actually cover them so we don't need to worry about gelling them or anything like that so epoxy resin in there will be absolutely fine <laughs> Okay, so we filled all these holes along the window line here with thickened epoxy and all the way up the leading edge of that B pillar up there. So we just need to leave that to set up. Done that on both sides. And we've also done the final prep on this leading edge here of the windscreen, this molding here. So that's been sanded with 150 grit sandpaper. Uh, underneath this edge as well so that's all looking pretty good unfortunately we've not got any polyester resin well we have got polyester resin but it actually gone out of date so we need to order some more so we've not been able to lay anything in these areas that we've dished out ready so that'll be one for next time so we'll order some more polyester resin and also we've just dished out that one over this side so again this is for the windscreen wiper drilled in the wrong place uh, slightly too far back so we've dished that out and we'll fill that with some uh, some resin and some chopped strand and we'll be able to gel coat that and also just flatten it again with some wet and dry so that's all looking good and then also sanded all these a pillars inside the windscreen line now on both sides so that's been sanded with 150 grit sandpaper so i think really we are at the end of the sanding i think we're pretty much there we've just got tiny bit to do now on the leading edge of these b pillars and then i think we're there it's been a bit bigger job than we thought to be honest with you always takes longer than you think these jobs um but yeah we are getting there <laughs>
So that was a nice little surprise. I kind of had a feeling this that this something like this might be going on under here, which is why we've taken the rather drastic action of cutting that section out. It just didn't look good when we were we sort of went in there with a the screwdriver and we were digging out some of this debris and it just didn't look good. So um, yeah, I think it's probably a good job we've we've done that to be honest with you. It won't be hard to stick this back. We'll be able to clear all this out and then just use some thickened epoxy and stick that back down. And fair that's so that's that's not too much of a a worry um, but yeah this is really wet in here so this has obviously been happening over a period of time so I think what we need to do obviously is just clean all this out and um, let that dry and then once that's fully dry we'll be able to go in there with some thickened epoxy and then just stick this piece back on Okay, we've removed all of that damaged and rotten uh, plywood and uh, made a nice cut across the front here. Got rid of all of the wet foam and damaged foam as well, including above the ply as well. That was all wet. Um, so that's all open to the fresh air now. So hopefully that with a little bit of heat on it, uh, we should be able to dry that. If we can't, when we will put the moisture meter on it before we do anything more anyway, we won't seal it in. Um, if we can't dry it then we'll probably have to go to plan b which is the only thing we can think to do is to literally put a drill in here and just destroy this and then scrape it all out but that'd be quite difficult to do so i think we're going to see if we can dry it first and then we'll reassess in a few days from there so next what we're going to do is go on to our sliding canopy gutters where the rails were we had all those holes in the uh, grp so they've all been epoxy filled now so i'm just going to fare both sides ready for priming. All the fairing is now in so we just need to leave that overnight to set up so that's going to be a wrap for today's video guys hope you enjoyed today's video if you did give us a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one <laughs>